Enjoy the convenience of seven days a week banking and extended hours with Cube from First Arkansas Bank and Trust. Member FDIC. It's time for From the Short Grass with Trey Shap, a golf podcast for those who love golf, struggle with golf, and just like to enjoy the outdoors and fellowship with friends, all while chasing a ball around trying to put it in a four and a quarter inch diameter hole. From the Short Grass is brought to you by Blackman Auctions. For over 80 years, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. By MinnowsPlus.com. From baits to waiters, if it helps you catch a fish, they have it. And now, from the short grass, here is your host, Trey Shap. Welcome to another edition of From the Short Grass. I am your host, Trey Shap. The FedEx St. Jude Invitational is this weekend. It's a WGC event, but this is the last year that it will be a WGC event. The PGA Tour announced earlier this week that its schedule is changing. Next year, the FedEx St. Jude Championship, played at TPC Southwind in Memphis, will be the first leg in the FedEx Cup playoffs. There will be three events, the FedEx St. Jude Championship, the BMW Championship, and then the Tour Championship. The FedEx St. Jude Championship will take place August 8th through 14th, with the Tour Championship taking place on the 22nd through the 28th of August at Eastlake Golf Club in Atlanta, Georgia. How about golf in the Olympics? Xander Shoffley of the United States wins the gold with a 68-63-68 final round 67, four under par, 266 total, 18 under par. He wins by one over Roy Sabatini, who shot 69-67-70, and comes in on Sunday with a final round 61, 10 under par for a 267 total, finished at 17 under par. Sabatini picks up the silver. There was a seven-man playoff for bronze. C.T. Pan and Colin Morikawa both birdied the third playoff hole to advance. They were the last two standing. Then C.T. Pan parred the fourth playoff hole, the 18th, to win the bronze medal. Colin Morikawa, a little bit of bad luck as his second shot plugged in the lip of the bunker on 18. He was not able to get it up and down to tie the hole with par and go on to the fifth playoff hole. So C.T. Pan of Chinese Taipei wins the bronze medal. The women in full swing right now in the Olympics at Kasumi Gaseki Country Club in Saitama, Japan. I want to tell you about MinnowsPlus.com. If you want frog togs outerwear, you need to go to MinnowsPlus.com. They have the full line of frog togs outerwear right there for you. You can shop online from the comfort of your home. Go to MinnowsPlus.com and check out the frog tog lineup. When we come back on the tee. The head coach of the University of Central Florida, Gus Malzahn, he loves to play the game of golf, and he's got some stories to tell. We'll be back after this. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. Me sponsoring a golf show is great irony. I've been a phenomenally bad golfer for 30 years. I don't know the difference between a penalty area and a bunker. I like it, but I'm really bad. You listen to this show and to Trey because he's a great golfer and knows the game backwards and forwards. I know auctions like Trey knows golf. I've been a professional auctioneer for 30 years. I know auctions. Trey knows golf. Listen to the correct expert. Call me to learn about auctions, not Trey. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Minnows Plus is your local source for live bait and live well supplies. They carry the entire line of SureLife products, everything from better bait and finer shiner to no ammonia products to keep your bait and your catch thriving till you get back to the dock. They are the best source for all your private land ponds. Minnows Plus has fish food and pond fertilizer to keep your pond healthy and thriving all year long. If you own or run a bait and tackle shop and need to resupply, contact Minnows Plus and ask about their wholesale prices. Open to the public and walk-ins are welcome. Find them on the web at MinnowsPlus.com. On the tee, the head coach of the University of Central Florida Knights, Gus Malzahn. Coach Malzahn, thanks for joining us on From the Short Grass. Uh, We're going to talk a lot of golf, but first let's talk a little football. You're a football coach, well-known football coach, and it seems like every time I sit down with you, I ask you, you're still a high school football coach from Arkansas. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I, that's 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 who I am. I'm a high school football coach from the state of Arkansas, and I'm proud of it. I just happen to be, uh, you know, coaching college football the last 16 years, and but uh, you know, feel very blessed. Uh, great memories, uh, you know, coaching high school, and really gave me a great great foundation for what I do today. You've traveled quite a bit. You were at Auburn for several years. And now you have a home in Orlando, Florida. You're the head coach, the University of Central Florida. Yeah, I really enjoy it. Um, you know, it's uh, been, I guess we've been here five months now. Uh, this is a, a program that's won and won big, you know, the last five years. And so foundations have been built. Uh, we feel like we can do some real special things here and really looking forward to the season. The move from Auburn to UCF, it really wasn't something that I think you thought would happen. Auburn decided to let you go, and you were kind of in limbo there for a little yeah. while. You thought you might dabble in a little bit of TV. Yeah, that was really the plan. We were going to do a little TV, and I was going to sit out a year. Me and Chris are going to travel a little bit. She was really excited about that. And when this job came open, uh, I just told her, I said, uh, you know, that that we're going to take a hard look at that. And when they hired Terry Mahajer, the AD, that we were together at Arkansas State for a year, we won a championship together. When he was hired, I said, uh, if he calls, we're going. Five minutes later, he called, and now we're here. Did you have any insight into that? I mean, five five minutes later, he called you. Yeah. Did, were you trying to set her up for that? No, I really didn't. <laughs> uh, it was just uh, just saw on Twitter they hired Terry, and uh, you know I was already really interested. Okay, this is a job that uh, in the coaching world that everybody knows you can win, and most coaches feel like this place is a gold mine, and that's the way I looked at it. I've always felt like if the right guy ever got here and would stay here and build it, and not leave as a stepping stone job, and have a chance to do that. Now I believe that even more since I've been here. And you're going to be here a while. Yeah. You, want, you want to build this yeah, thing up. I really do. You know, I'm 55. Um, been fortunate enough to win a national championship and almost won two. So I've been there and done that. And uh, I'm wanting to build this thing up. Uh, and I think, you know, college football, the, the uh, landscape is changing daily, you know. And uh, I just think we're in really good position you know, for the future. The move down here, is is this the last move you think you'll make in the coaching you, profession? You know, in my, in my mind, that's exactly what I'm what I'm thinking. I'm 55, you know, and we had eight weeks off, and we got a chance, me and Christy, really, we prayed about things. We kind of reflected, hey, what's the next move? And after about two weeks, man, I, I just, I want to coach again. And uh, this this is a place that, every, like I said earlier, everything's set up. The, the college football landscape's changing. I think we're in a super spot. And, uh, you know, they're going to 12 teams instead of four. That fits us really good. And we can recruit here. I mean, it's a great place to recruit. So, you know, I, my, my goal here is to, you know, try to win a national championship here. And I think we can do it. And so, you know, I'm 55 and, you know, coach six, eight more years. And then my grandkids will be around six, seven, eight, something like that. And they'll be playing ball and – just retire and go off in the sunset. You and Christy, y'all spent a lot of time together right after Auburn let you go. And mm -hmm. did that wear on you? <laughs> any? Tell you what. So we spent eight weeks together and we were together 24 seven. Now you got to understand like, you know, for 30 straight years, it's kind of hit and miss, but it was a good time. I mean, she was, uh, I think she was wanting to go in the transfer portal on me. <laughs> At times I probably was wanting to do the same thing, but it was a really good growing experience. And uh, I think more than anything, you know, did something for 30 years, never had a day off, and then eight, eight weeks you have time to reflect, and it really refreshed me. I mean, it gave me a chance to kind of look at some things from a different viewpoint and kind of evaluate, you know, the last 30 years and what I would change and what I think I could do better, and it was a blessing for me, you know, to be able to go through that. You're fired up. Yeah, I'm fired up because I think we can do something special. I mean, I just everything's set and uh, it's new. We got a young fan base. We got seventy two thousand students, one of the largest student bodies in the country. We've got a really good quarterback, and uh, like I said, we're, we've got some good recruits coming in. So we'll see what happens this year. You open up against Boise State at home yeah. on a Thursday night, mm -hmm. and a lot of people think Boise State. Okay, yeah, that's good football. UCF is good football too, but I think it's kind of ironic that the head coach that followed you at Arkansas State is now the same head coach at Auburn and is following you yeah. there in Brian Harson. Yeah, that, that's pretty neat there because um, you know we we uh, you know we we recruited pretty well at Arkansas State. You know, Hugh Freeze first of all left me a lot of really good players. Okay, so. And then, you know, Brian followed me there, and now he's following me at, at Auburn, and I think they're going to be really good. I mean, there's some really, really good players that, 
you know, that, that are there. And, then, of course, they've got Alabama and Georgia at home. So it's, uh, it should be a good year. Are you glad you're not in the SEC anymore with Texas and LU coming in? <laughs> you know, when you're in that league, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, you know, just, just bring, it, bring on the next guy. That's how you got to look at that deal. It's no days off, is it? No, there's no days off. There's no days off, um, you know, but it's, uh, it's a real league. And uh, you got to bring your lunch every week. And it's, it's one of those things that you always look at the, you know, top teams on your schedule. But what everybody doesn't understand is the grind of the weekly things that go through that. So, but it's, it's a real league and, you know, a lot of fun to be a part of. Golf. Let's get to it. We're done with football. This is a golf podcast. <laughs> when did you first pick up a golf club? You know, I was probably about seven or eight. Um, my parents split up and my dad stayed in Texas and, and uh, my mom moved us to Arkansas. And when I'd go visit my dad in Breckenridge, Texas, um, we'd go out and play. And so, Really, I learned golf in the summers when I visited my dad on, really in uh, West Texas. Did he kind of teach you the game? Uh, I don't, I don't know if he taught me. I think I was kind of self-taught, but uh, you know, it was it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it and uh, played a few of these junior tournaments. Probably when when I got about fifteen, sixteen, and just loved the competitiveness of it and the challenge of playing. So you're a competitive guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I like to, I like to think that way. Yeah. Very competitive. Yeah. Where do you get that from? Did, did you get that early on in life growing up? You know, I think so. I mean, I was uh, – growing up, I played every sport I could, and I think it was from the competitiveness and learned a lot, you know, with the different sports and all that, and uh, this helped me make who I am today. Did you ever think about playing golf in high school or in college? I, I played golf in junior high. And, uh, you know, seventh grade, eighth grade, I was pretty good. Ninth grade, I got where I could hit it a little bit farther, and I got worse, okay? So that's probably a good lesson for everyone. But, uh, no, I, I did. I enjoyed playing golf uh, and then got in high school and, you know, started playing football and basketball and all that. Golf wasn't popular back then. Not like it is now. Uh, there's no doubt about that, but um, you're, you're exactly right. What courses did you grow up playing in Fort Smith? Yeah, you know, Ben Garen's my course. I mean, that's what I grew up playing. Uh, played a little bit at Fianna Hills because I lived right below it. Uh, but really, it was Ben Garen. Hard Scrabble Country Club? Uh, a few times. You know, it was tough to get on now growing up. I didn't get a chance to play there very many times. But it is a really nice, you know, course. What about in Little Rock? You had told me earlier that burns park was oh yeah a course that you really liked that yeah. one in rebsman yeah uh, burns park you know we uh the coaches clinic they always had the golf uh, the, the tournament with the coaches clinic that was always exciting and then they had a four ball the next weekend so i'd just stick around for that and had a buddy from fort smith kevin rome he'd drive over and we'd play and i think we played in it probably seven or eight years in a row but that was a lot of fun so that coach's clinic, who were some of the guys that you played with and who were the good golfers back then? Well, I mean, Gary Jackson I, was was really good. There was a handful of other guys uh, that that were pretty good. It was just – it was probably more of uh, just getting all the coaches together in August. It was the week before we started, uh, you know, the season. So it was just great memories, you know. And it was – it was I'm going to say it was a little competitive but not – you know, like a normal golf tournament. Hughes, Arkansas. There aren't many golf courses in Hughes, Arkansas. Where did you find and to oh, play yeah. over there? You know, we we went to Memphis is what we did. Um, it was about a 40, 45-minute drive to go to Memphis. I didn't play much golf when I was at Hughes so, but because then, of the drive. Right. But then you get to Springdale. and Oh, yeah. Yeah, Springdale Country Club, that's my place, you know. Uh, in the summer, I'd play four or five times a, uh, a week with the noon group there. Um Coach Gerald Williams was a part of that, and there were some really good golfers. We had a, we had a great time, and that may be my favorite course, you know, of all time. Springdale yeah. Country Club. Oh yeah, they're gonna love that. Yeah. So you're at Shiloh Christian, and then Gerald Williams. You were talking yeah. about him at Springdale. He could play now. Really? Oh yeah, he could hit a long way. So you're at Shiloh Christian, and you win a state, several state championships there, and then Gerald Williams decides to retire from Springdale. Yeah. How was that move? It was uh, – at the time, it was a tough move, but I, but I knew it was the right move. Um, it was hard following, following Gerald Williams. He's a legend, you know, and we brought this no huddle and we were throwing around and it was tough that first year. I think we went seven and four and it wasn't a good seven and four. Uh, then we 
started establishing ourselves and playing good football. And boy, that was just a shallow Christian was an unbelievable five years for me and Christy and, and our girls. It was just a great time. And then Springdale was, was just the same. I mean, it was uh, five years and boy, I was fortunate enough to coach some really good players. We, we won some big games and just a bunch of great memories. And that was the last time you made a move that you didn't have to change uh, addresses. <laughs> yeah, that, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, in Springdale, yeah. you stay right there. And oh, did, oh, yeah, yeah. From Shiloh to Springdale, yes, we we didn't have to move. That was, and that made it a little bit tougher. And you know, there at the time, that was a little bit of a rivalry right there, and they're right across the street. And yeah, that was an interesting time. And you had the same country club too. So I mean, yeah, you had it, it made. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> there's good, there's good to go and bad go with that. Yeah. So then you're hired at Arkansas as the offensive coordinator. Who on that staff do you think were the good golfers? Oh, wow. That's uh, Because might... we had the coaches. Uh, Houston would always have his coaches and car dealers golf tournament before yeah. the season. I remember yeah. you played in it. Yeah, I did. Um, we, we just played a couple times that, that year. And, I mean, every time I think I played, I played with Houston. So, I really can't remember if there's any. You know, Rep obviously was, was a volunteer. and He can flat out play. But – I don't know if there was any other golfers on that on that staff or not. Well, when I when I sat down with Houston, I said, Coach, I remember you brought in John Daly one year to play in your media car dealers yeah. golf tournament. He goes, got a recruit? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. That's a pretty good recruit right there. <laughs> yeah. You played with John Daly. Yeah. Yeah, at the Regions um, in Birmingham. It was a lot of fun. Of course, we're, we're the same age and, and got to Arkansas the same year. Lived in Hots Hall, I think the seventh floor. So, we had a little history. What do you remember about Big John in college? Uh, you know, he was uh, – he had that personality, you know, similar to a real confident guy. And, uh, you know, he was uh, he was a pretty good basketball player too. Really? Yeah, yeah. played in real basketball and he wasn't bad. He liked to shoot a lot, you know, but he was uh, he was pretty good. When he won the PGA, were you surprised? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I was telling Christy we were in Hughes and – Turned on the TV, and obviously he shocked the world with that. And I said, that's the guy that we lived in Hots Hall with. And, uh, you know, he was on the golf team. I didn't really even know he was a scholarship golfer. I didn't know he was that good. We just kind of knew each other. And obviously he was he turned into the PGA champ and then, then even more than that. So it's pretty neat. Pretty neat to watch him. He won the British Open then after that at St. Andrews. Yeah. And wow. You've got an interesting – trip to St. Andrews for the British Open a couple of years ago. You're good friends with Jason Duffner yeah. from your time at Auburn. Yeah, we got a chance. Me and Christy went over there, um, and uh, I think we got there on a Wednesday. Got there early. We walked to practice around with him. Dustin Johnson, which, you know, I'm a big Dustin Johnson fan. Got a chance to watch him play for 18 holes. That was really neat. Um, then we got a chance that day to go to the driving range, and we saw Tiger Woods, and I'm a big Tiger Woods fan, okay? So we, we talked football with him probably for 20, 30 minutes, and it was uh, it had the wow factor, okay? So yeah. got back to the hotel, and I told Chris, I said, man, Tiger Woods knows who I am. I mean, it was like one of those surreal moments, you know. He was talking about the kick six in 2013 and all that. It was really neat. And then we got a chance once the tournament started, you know, I followed Jason around both days and uh, me and Christy just hung around the St. Andrews and just everything that goes with that. It was just an unbelievable experience. We stayed uh, on the 17th hole, the road hole, got a chance right outside the window. You'd see them, you know, the guys playing their second shot, you know, into 17 right in front of our hotel room. It was a, uh, it was one of the best experiences I've had. Let's go back to meeting Tiger Woods. Yeah. I mean, here you are, you're a big Tiger Woods fan, oh, never yeah. met him before yeah. in your life. And yeah. all of a sudden, you're standing, yeah. you know, six feet apart. Yeah, and we're talking football. And Dustin Johnson's right there with us. And, of course, you know, he's a pretty good athlete with itself. But, yeah, we were talking a little Auburn football, a little Stanford football. And, uh, yeah, it was really neat to sit there and uh, get a chance to have that conversation. But when you went back and told your wife about it, she yeah. was not impressed. <laughs> no, but she doesn't understand. Okay, that's Tiger Woods now. You know what I mean? So, uh, but it was it was a lot of fun. So you're over there, and unfortunately, the final day, yeah, they had a lot of wind. Yeah, yeah. How about that? They canceled the day because of wind, and I had I didn't get a chance to watch the final round, so that was kind of a bummer. Uh, we had to fly back. Uh, you know, obviously it was I think a week before we started fall camp, so we had to get back. But I watched it on TV. But it was an unbelievable experience, and you know, I'd love to go back. You've played a lot of good courses around the country, and I'm sure you like to play some of the best of the best. Which one sticks out 
in your mind? <laughs> well, I've, if I've, you can narrow it yeah, down that, to one, that's really hard. You know, I got a chance to play Augusta, I guess, the last seven or eight years, and uh, it always has the wow factor. I mean, every time you go there, you're you're thinking like, what am I doing here? You know, am I really here to play? And it's it's everything that you would kind of build up in your mind. It it, it delivers. I mean, it, it's that's what it is, and just. Uh, it's just a great experience. I got a chance to play Pebble Beach, uh, you know, this last, I guess it was early June, late May. Uh, you know, that stretch of, what is it, six, seven, and eight, you know, there can't be three better holes in, in the world than that. That was just really unbelievable to, to get a chance to play that. So those two really stick out, you know, that uh, I've been fortunate enough to play. Yeah, six, seven, and eight at Pebble. I mean, right there on the Carmel Bay, and you've yeah. got the the six. It's the par five. You go up the hill, and then seven's the short par three that they have said at, at times you could hit as little as a little flip wedge mm-hmm. to as much as a five iron, depending yeah. on the wind. Right. And then you have eight where you hit it up there, and then you've got the cliff, and you've got. I mean, the greens are unbelievably yeah. small yeah. out there. Yeah, that's what stood out to me. The greens are small. Um, they roll well, but it's hard to get on them. In seven, you know, it looks really easy. It wasn't really easy for me, I'll tell you that. I think I, I bogeyed it both days. So it's, uh, But that, that, uh, that three-hole stretch really stood out to me. What did you shoot at Pebble? Oh, gosh, it was ugly. Um, yeah, the last two or three years, I've not been playing real good golf. I probably shot 90, something like that. What's your best round? Uh, best round ever? Yeah. Um, I shot 71 at Rebsman park that's my best round ever i shot even par um in one of these asga stroke plays uh in northwest arkansas um probably 2003 2004 those are my two best rounds best golf course in the state of arkansas is it springdale i mean for me it is i mean there, there's other yeah you know, really well good, no but really i mean good. this is oh yeah if you if i could play anywhere and they said man you can play anywhere you want to say arkansas i'm going to springdale man and, uh, of course, you know, I was just, you know, I co- coached there for 10 years or, or whatever. So that's where I played and just got used to it. And I love it. When you became a head coach, a lot goes with that. Perks come with it. Yeah. Country club memberships mm-hmm. come with it. Yeah. What, uh, where, where did you play in Jonesboro? Uh, I played, uh, God, what is it? Uh, not the Jonesboro country club, but the other private Ridge, one. Ridge point. Ridge point. Yeah. And I love Ridge point. Yeah. That was a. That was a really nice course and played quite a bit when I was in Jonesboro. And I lived right there, you know, I think uh, on one of the holes. So it was really convenient. Uh, but, yeah, we, we I played quite a bit when I was there. Now, Ridge Point's a little different and because the front nine, you have Zoysia Fairways. Yeah. The back nine, you have Bermuda Fairways. Yeah. And see, I didn't even know that. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> you tell me something I didn't know. You so, didn't realize that. No, I didn't realize that. How about that? But uh, but I was playing pretty good golf. I can think it was 2012. I was, you know, I was playing, you know, in the summer. I probably played three or four times a, you yeah. know, a week. And so that was, that was a lot of fun. Our thanks to Gus Malzahn for inviting us down to Orlando, Florida, and his home for that interview. Part two you will be able to hear in our next episode. You can really tell he loves the game of golf, and he's also fired up about being the head coach of the University of Central Florida. I want to tell you about Blackman Auctions. BlackmanAuctions.com. They have their one big day of trucks, trailers, and equipment. No small stuff day coming up. It's their August Contractors Auction. It's going to be held at 425 Blackman Road on Wednesday. Wednesday, August the 25th in Lone Oak, Arkansas. If you want to find out more information about the August Arkansas Contractors Auction, go to blackmanauctions.com. Since 1938, better auctions have always been Blackman Auctions. We're back after this. Minnows Plus is your local source for live bait and live well supplies. They carry the entire line of SureLife products, everything from better bait and finer shiner to no ammonia products to keep your bait and your catch thriving till you get back to the dock. They are the best source for all your private land ponds. Minnows Plus has fish food and pond fertilizer to keep your pond healthy and thriving all year long. If you own or run a bait and tackle shop and need to resupply, contact Minnows Plus and ask about their wholesale prices. Open to the public and walk-ins are welcome. Find them on the web at minnowsplus.com. This is Thomas Blackman with Blackman Auctions. Me sponsoring a golf show is great irony. I've been a phenomenally bad golfer for 30 years. I don't know the difference between a penalty area and a bunker. I like it, but I'm really bad. You listen to this show and to Trey because he's a great golfer and knows the game backwards and forwards. I know auctions like Trey knows golf. 
I've been a professional auctioneer for 30 years. I know auctions. Trey knows golf. Listen to the correct expert. Call me to learn about auctions, not Trey. Since 1938, better auctions are Blackman Auctions. Welcome back to From the Short Grass. Now on the tee with our weekly rule segment, it's PGA Master Professional Adam Carney. Adam, I'm on the green. I've hit a putt. Flag stick's not in. I've already pulled the flag stick out. The ball rolls up, and I've always said 99.9% of the putts that don't make it to the hole will not go in. Mm-hmm. And the ball is just sitting there. It's just hanging over the hole. It looks like it's going to drop and go in, and mm-hmm. I'm going to consider the ball to be hold, mm-hmm. but it's just – it's. It's, it hadn't gone in yet. How long do I have? What's the procedure? So simply put, um, you've got a reasonable amount of time to get to your golf ball. Um, so what does that reasonable amount of time mean? Can you I know, go circle the green and walk? <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, you, you, I mean, you can't run over to the beverage cart cart person right. and get a get a diet coke or a beer or whatever, and, and then come back. And then come back. You know, but it does contemplate the fact that you're you're going to be distraught that the ball didn't go in the hole, and you and you just kind of put your hands up on your head, and you're just eyes closed, can't just in shock that it didn't go in, and you may stay in that condition for three, four, five seconds, and then you just shake your head, and now you walk up. That's when your ten seconds starts. So once you walked up, now you've got ten seconds, and if the ball falls in the hole, it seems to be hold with the previous stroke. Um, if it doesn't the ball's in play if however after 10 seconds the ball does fall in the hole it is hold with the previous stroke but you get a one stroke penalty so it's you know it's it's one of those things where you know if the ball's overhanging lip the hole and the player is obviously uh, taking his time to get to the to the hole i'd start the clock if i was a rules official but you've got 10 seconds once you get to it yeah yeah, you've got you've got ten. You've seconds. got time to kind of look, see. Okay, well, is it in the shade? Is it out of the shade? If it's a Bermuda grass green, the Could grass be. is going to be falling at some point because of the sun angle. Yeah, and so keep in mind that the the crux of that rule really was the ten seconds was there to determine if the ball was actually at rest. Um, and and I've seen instances where balls overhanging the lip of the hole, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, okay, that thing's not at rest yet. It may not fall in the hole. But it's it's definitely not at at rest yet. So after ten seconds, we're going to say, "Hey, the ball's at rest." Um, so I think of Justin Thomas, a shot, and I believe it was a PGA Championship as well, where he hits a putt and it's just sitting there. Yeah, and he slowly, you know, walks up and he's looking, looking, and he's about to go back and hit. And all of a sudden, it falls in. Right, and it was within ten seconds because they counted. And right, so right. he's good. And then the other one. I mean, this this is iconic. Augusta National, Tiger Woods, the Masters, yep. sixteen, yeah, the chip, yeah, and it's just hanging on the lip, and it actually, I think it actually stopped for a second. Then all of a sudden, it, it falls in, yeah, and he didn't even have to get up there because that one happened pretty fast, yeah. And you know, you know what's interesting about that? Not that I'm plugging any one particular company, but, but the Nike golf ball, the, the Nike, Nike golf swoosh ball, just they they hovered there. They estimate to this day they have got more free publicity than they've spent in marketing in Nike golf their entire and because it's played every year oh it's played all the time um and so yeah I mean that's a good example I mean so you saw Tiger in that instance he kind of crunched down he's like you know couldn't believe it didn't go in and then he started walking toward it and he saw he saw it was starting to move and he kind of paused and he got down a little bit and the ball falls in the hole. He hadn't even reached the hole when the ball fell in the hole, but he really didn't do anything that way. Wasn't on the green either. Yeah, yeah. Well, but it doesn't matter. The ball's still overhanging the hole. Sure. But, I mean, still, I mean, the circumstances under there is like, yeah, he had plenty of time to do that. Now, I've seen instances, uh, I can't, I, I can't, the particular name of the player doesn't come to mind where he, you know, he him hot around for 32 seconds, I think it was, before the ball finally fell in. He's like, you know, hey, I, I, that's in. Yeah, you know? no. No. no, sorry, yeah. parts. Yeah, it's in, but add one. So. Yeah, <laughs> it's in, but add one. Yeah, he's Adam Carney. He knows the rules of golf. If you got a question on the rules of golf, email us from the short grass at gmail dot com. That will do it for this edition of From the Short Grass. I leave you with this quote from Tommy Bolt: "Never break your putter and your driver in the same round, or you're dead." I hope you enjoy your next round on the course, and when you find your ball mark, fix it and a couple of more. And I hope to see you from the short grass.
You've been listening to From the Short Grass, a weekly podcast dedicated to the game of golf. From the Short Grass is brought to you by MinnowsPlus.com and Blackman Auctions. This has been a presentation of the Buzz Radio Network.